Time for my top 10 designer winter list. These are among some of the best scents to consider for cold weather guys. So chill out and prepare yourself because I have some hidden gems for you this year. He ain't lying. Like I do every year. <laughs> What's going on YouTube? I'm that clone guy E and this is Simply Put Sense. On this channel, I entertain you while talking about some of the best and worst fragrances on the market today. And my goal is to help you save time and money. So just relax and I'll help you take the stress out of the fragrance world. I promise I'll make it a lot easier for you to navigate. Happy New Year guys. Actually like happy new decade. Like it's crazy. 10 years went by so quick, it's scary, absolutely scary. So it's winter, and it's my favorite time of the year to wear fragrances. It's the time of the year where it's cold, so I can wear the most obnoxious, over-the-top, loud, weirdo scents in my collection, and I really care, you know? <laughs> you know, I'm talking about monsters, you know, but quick disclaimer, I promise fragrances on this list is not going to be over the top but you do want to wear your lot of fragrances when it's cold because your skin is really really dry when it's cold and when it's freezing you also bundle up a lot so what you end up spraying gets on your scarf your collar whatever so when it's cold out I like to spray heavier scents but just about two or three times between my chest and my t-shirt you know, like not so much on exposed skin, like my neck or behind the ears, like I would do normally with lighter fragrances or like middle tier powerful fragrances. <laughs> with two to three sprays between my chest and my t-shirt, I won't really choke no one out, including myself. And that's really important. <laughs> I like obnoxious scents, honestly, but unless I'm going out to a club, I don't really wear them obnoxiously. Fight. At least on purpose. Yeah. <laughs> I like to look at fragrances as an extension of my wardrobe. I wear darker or warmer colors when it's cold. And I like to pair that up with darker or warmer fragrances. You can do what you want, you know, not telling you how to be you, but I'm just saying it just makes a lot of sense to think of fragrances like you think of your clothes. So fragrances that are full of leather, booze, vanilla, patchouli, amber, incense, sandalwood, tonka, musk, smoke, pepper, just to name a few, these are like the type of notes you wanna look for in a good winter scent. Again, you can do whatever you want. You can wear citrus when it's 20 degrees outside. I do what I want. But taking the time out to learn how to wear your fragrances and when to wear them really, really goes a long way towards your image and reputation. Trust me. From the house of Moschino, Toy Boy. I'm just gonna start this off by saying I really hate this fragrance's name and I really really hate this damn bottle It's horrible marketing, but marketing gimmicks aside this scent is really interesting It kind of reminds me of like a jar full of herbal tea mixed with spices and rose petals The outcome is a dark fresh spicy rose scent with a very unique almost herbal tea smell There's tons of unnatural oh notes in the scent I'm not gonna even lie. Some of which Moschino freely publishes, but I don't think it really detracts from the overall effort. Moschino is offering something really, really unique and interesting for men than the typical uninspired follow the leader remakes we're used to at this point. It's kind of a shame that the vehicle chosen to sell the juice is such a want want though. Like, <laughs> very polarizing fragrance in the community, but I think really the most hate comes from more of the presentation and the name than the actual fragrance. Regardless though, I think it's worth sampling if you like rose scents. From the house of all saints. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me! I know. Anyway, from the house of all saints, Sunset Right. All Saints is a British fashion retailer similar to Club Monaco, Everlane, and Scotch and Soda. They made a line of fragrances, most of which smell like other popular niche or niche-ish scents. Like there's a fragrance called Leather Skies and that smells a lot like Santal 33 in my opinion. They have a scent called Metal Waves which reminds me a lot of Gypsy Water by Byredo. And Sunset Riot is inspired by none other than Baccarat Rouge. This isn't really like a clone. It's not like trying to be Baccarat Rouge 100%. It's more like an alternative version. I'm not listening to you, you're crazy. You know, it's really not nowhere near as rich or thick. 
The quality and the blend are nowhere near on the same level, but Sunset Riot is a fresher, more area alternative to Baccarat Rouge. It's not as strong and not nearly as loud and disruptive as Baccarat Rouge can be, uh, but people will for sure notice it though. These differences make Sunset Riot a lot more masculine friendly than Baccarat Rouge. I think it's also a really great option for people who like the way Baccarat smells, but found it too loud or too heavy. And a 100 mil of Sunset Riot will set you back just $79. I'm just saying. I would describe this fragrance as sweet, fresh Baccarat. From the house of Bulgari, Man in Black, Orient. Now this is a scent that was on last year's list and I really still dig it enough to add it on this one. So it is what it is. <laughs> it's not the most popular Man in Black fragrance but to me, it's the most polished. It's the richest smelling of all the Man in Black fragrances that Bulgari has come out with, in my opinion, and I really, really dig this scent. It's full of cardamom, rum, leather, um, like a really weird fake oud, <laughs> and flowers in the form of tuberose and rose. It comes across like the perfect sweater fragrance. I would wear this scent with a hoodie too, though, with no issue. It lasts on skin, and it fits any scenario where you're going out at night. You could also wear it to an office if you go light with the sprays. It's just a really good dark scent from a company better known for their freshies. I would describe Bulgari Man in Black Orient as sweet, boozy leather. Zara's getting on this list. Unexpected, fresh, spicy. The name really says a lot about this scent because you don't expect Zara to be on this list. <laughs> It's really unexpected, but I gotta admit, Zara's newest scent from their tobacco collection is pretty damn good. This really isn't a tobacco scent as much as it is a cinnamon dominant fragrance. It's sweet, but not really a toothache, and it's in the same family of fragrance as CK1 Shock or Spice Bomb. It's very long lasting on my skin for a Zara scent, and I can honestly smell this like six to eight hours into it, and that's rare when it comes to Zara fragrances. There's even been occasions when I've smelled this in 10 hours into my wearing, which I found crazy. Unexpected goes on strong, and it makes a really good grab and go scent for the winter. It's very warm and inviting, and would make a really decent date scent if you're easy on the trigger also. Quick tip guys, when dating, especially at first, Always let your date scent be the loudest. Miguel! Leave me alone! It's a jacket though! She's Miguel! Trust me. Anyway, Unexpected Fresh and Spicy was unexpected for real. It's not the highest quality scent. It's kind of linear. It's also very bare bones, but it really does get better as it ages on your skin and it ticks a lot of boxes as well and it's all for less than $25. I would describe it as dense cinnamon bomb. The next fragrance on this list, Pure Tonka by Mugler. And I understand Mugler is polarizing and a lot of their fragrances aren't for everyone, but to me, Mugler makes fragrances that are distinctive, masculine, and a little bit strange, but in a good way. That touch of weird is a highlight for me to be real. And Amen, the first Mugler scent for men, it really started my fragrance passion. Before Amen, I wore fragrances. After Amen, I loved fragrances. Pure Tonka is kind of like a throwback to the original Amen to me. It's intense, bold, dark, sweet, quirky, dirty, masculine, and it's the best designer Tonka based fragrance on the market in my opinion at the moment. It's not as smooth as pure malt or pure Havan, the powerhouses, the main icons of the line. But it's not bad. But I do find that the dry down can compete with the best of the line and it really makes up for the screechy kind of like, you know, pots and pans down the stairs start, you know? It's a really, really great cold weather option though, without question. Halfway through this list, guys. Let's go. From the house of Vince Camuto. Yep. <laughs> Vince Camuto's smoked oud. <laughs> so guys, I know rose isn't for everyone, and this is my second rose entry on my top 10 list, but this is a completely opposite scent to Moschino's toy boy. No! which is also a rose fragrance. This is a lot more dark, more thick, more warm, more dense. When I first sprayed this fragrance, it smelled a little bit powdery and I got kind of nervous, 
because I don't like smelling like granny. Ow! But that powdery start kind of chilled out within seconds. And I breathed a sigh of relief and then a blast of juniper berries made its presence known. And those juniper berries really brighten up this fragrance a lot and it adds a lot to the opening. Um, and when that fades, the darker, more resinous, earthy oh, rose can't... takes over. It's also kind of spicy in the open into mid stages, and it dries down into this really interesting, beautiful Tonka fragrance. I don't find it smoky really though, so the name is kind of misleading, um, but it's definitely earthy. I don't really smell a lot of oud either. Whatever the oud is and this fragrance is for sure synthetic and more of like a filler ingredient to add depth but not really stand out. It's not really a masterpiece at all, but it's a really big accomplishment for Vince Camuto fragrances. In three words, I would describe this fragrance as ambery masculine rose. From the house of Comme de Garçon, copper. What I really, really admire about Comme de Garçon is that they don't make fragrances dictated by focus groups full of people who don't know or care about fragrance. And because of that, Comme de Garçon never made a scent, in my opinion, that would remind you of a body spray. Copper is the first tobacco vanilla amber scent from Comme de Garçon, and it's beautiful. It's really, really done well. It kind of reminds me of something though. It smells a lot like a warmer, more dynamic sunshine, man. A $350 fragrance from Amouage. It's not as linear as sunshine is. Copper starts off extremely green, almost vegetal. That greenness may tie into the name since copper turns green when it oxidizes. When the tobacco, incense, and amber come into play, it becomes this warm, sweet scent. Copper doesn't smell childish, but it does smell more playful than what we're used to from Comte de Garçon's pebble bottle lineup. Those scents tend to be a lot more serious than copper. Copper, though, is a lot more potent, thicker, and warmer than most Comte de Garçon fragrances, which tend to be airier and a lot more minimalist. This fragrance is a must sample for people out there who like warm, sweet scents. And I would describe this fragrance as green, warm tobacco. Thanks for sticking with me through this video, guys. And now for the top three fragrances with no further ado. From the house of Natura, Brazil, Dom. Now guys, you know I really, really like this brand because they really make good EDPs that practically no one knows about or talks about. Jacaranda was my favorite fragrance from this brand, but that's more of like a spring and summer scent. Dom is my favorite masculine leaning scent from Natura, worthy for cold weather. It's a green smoky leather fragrance. It's a smokiness though that kind of smells clean once you get past that momentary barbecue phase, which lasts like a few seconds. Barbecue, you heard right, yeah, I'm not lying about that, but yeah, it's not for everyone, again, for sure, but it's a really beautiful scent. I'm a huge fan of it for a couple of reasons. Like, for one, it's not too loud. It dries down, but it becomes like a skin scent for the length of it more than like this loud projecting smoky fragrance, you know? and it doesn't oh remind God. me of anything like Tuscan leather or ombre leather, and that makes a big deal for me, for a leather fragrance to not be trying to copy anybody else. Impressive to me at this point from a brand you really don't know about. When I smell Dom, I'm impressed with the combo of freshness and smokiness. Like, if you're a fan of smoky or leathery scents, this is a really, really great option that you really gotta try. I would definitely sample this for sure. And the main notes in this scent are vetiver, cypress, and leather. Another really cool thing about it, there's nothing fruity in this scent. There's nothing cute or pretty or anything cutesy about Dom. <laughs> it's all rugged. Like the best way I would describe this fragrance, rugged green leather. From the house of Prada, Luna Rosa Black. Prada Luna Rosa, guys, like black. I really, sh I'm shocked that this scent even made my list, but I started wearing it and I really, really dig this fragrance. Um, a Luna Rosa scent has never made my top 10, so this is really crazy that this scent made it to number two, but it really deserves to be on this list. Prada is known for their freshies. Luna Rosa Black shows, though, that they can do a dark fragrance also. I'm, the next sentence I'm about to say, guys, is gonna be weird, but it's a fact. This is the first fragrance for men that Prada has made that you can't consider fresh. The first. Luna Rosa Black is deep and thick. You know, and I don't mean loud and strong. Like, 
It does wear thick and dense with a mild sweet tonka and a slightly powdery amber. It's not baby powder or powder you associate with women though, um, but it is powdery. It lasts on me for about seven plus hours with below average projection after the second hour. It almost becomes like this long-term skin scent that stays on you for a really long time, but it's not something that will clear out the room when you walk into it. It's not gonna fill the room up at all. To me, it's a really strange dark fragrance. Like it smells really thick, but yet it wears like a fresh fragrance. Very, very Prada-ish. <laughs> it's the most rich and exotic male scent from Prada also, and I really dig what they did with Luna Rosa Black. It might be a dark fragrance, but it wears on skin with that non-disruptive, easygoing Prada style. I would describe this scent as thick, but light. Final. And from the house again, you guys will not believe it. Again, from the house of Comme de Garçon. Yep, Comme de Garçon is killing me, absolutely killing me right now. <laughs> and it's claimed two of my top five spots. Now, number one. Black. It's a dark but fresh licorice leather tar and smoke blend with pepper. And what color do you associate with all those ingredients? Yes, sir. Black. It's the most unique scent on this list, hands down. Hands down. It's my number one because it's the perfect scent for winter, regardless if it's not the most mainstream. It's beautiful, but not pretty. So a lot of people might not appreciate it at first, but it has a way of growing on you. It's a great, beautiful, beautiful balance of artistic and wearable, and it really straddles that line finally. And I really, really dig conceptual fragrances. But not everyone is gonna appreciate a fragrance that smells uncommon or out of the ordinary. And this is definitely out of the ordinary. And it performs all day without being over the top which again is also kind of unique to Comme des Garçons. It's definitely one of their strongest fragrances. It's well blended, it has a lot of character. It can be dressed up with a dark suit or it can be worn with a distressed t-shirt with holes and rips all in it. It's that versatile, it's crazy. It's definitely something that's not safe. So if you're into safe, you might not like this, but if you like to be adventurous and unique and you like to wear something that lets you stand out in a good way, Black by Comme des Garçons definitely will do the trick. I would describe this fragrance as black in a bottle. So there you have it, guys. Those are my top 10 designer fragrances for this winter. I think there are familiar and new scents for some of you to discover and consider. And there is something, I think, for like everyone on this list. What winter scents are you wearing, though? I'm really, really curious. What's your top three for this winter? Sound off in the comment section down below. Let me know what you think, guys. Like this video if you appreciated it and hit that subscribe button. I'd really appreciate your support. I'm that cologne guy, E, and this is Simply Put Sense. And I'm Simply O-U-T. Peace. And you know what else? Screw you guys. I'm going home. Yeah, screw you guys. Home.